Here I am in a forest near my hometown of Alkmaar in the north of the Netherlands. A place of great value and beauty. And I come here as often as I can. A little further south, several devastating forest fires have been raging over the past weeks. The fires were caused by a long drought, at least by Dutch standards. The Peel Natural Reserve was hit particularly badly. In fact, it was the largest fire on the record in the Netherlands. The fire destroyed 80% of the nature reserve's 1,000 hectares. Now, the destruction of 800 hectares may not seem like much on a global scale, but for a small country such as ours, it is a big loss. In our densely populated area, it is just too close to home. It left a deep impression on me. Now firsthand we can see what is happening around the globe. And I don't need to remind you, we all know what is happening in Australia. We all know what happened in California. In the extraordinary and challenging times of Corona, the first priority of course must be to deal with the acute health crisis. But also economic questions must be addressed. How are we going to deal with them? How are we going to recover? This is not just a question for governments. It's not just an academic question. It is a question that is crucial for central banks and supervisors as well. The days are gone that central banks didn't know how to spell the word sustainability. The days are gone that supervisors didn't know what the sustainable development goals were. The days are behind us that the climate crisis was never discussed in the corridors of central banks. This is certainly true for the Dutch Central Bank. And it is also true for the NGFS, the network of central banks and supervisors for the greening of the financial sector that I chair. Central banks from emerging and uh, developed economies. Central banks from five continents. If we want to comply with the Paris Agreement, and we must, if we want to timely transition to a zero emission economy, and we must, if we want to achieve the sustainable development goals, and we must, then the financial sector has a vital role to play. By provi providing loans to their clients, by investing funds that have been entrusted to them, financial firms wield leverage, leverage on the real economy. And we, on our turn, we central banks and supervisors, will leverage over the financial sector. So this double leverage is incredibly powerful. It's an incredible, powerful force that can and must be used to achieve the Paris goals, to achieve the sustainable development goals, to save the planet. Now, of course, we are not the WWF. We are central banks and supervisors. And we must, at all times, remain within the strict limits of our legal mandate. Powerful courts check whether we do. But climate-related risks are a source of financial risk. And dealing with financial risk is very much within our mandate. Therefore, the way financial firms deal with climate change and the climate change-related risks is very much within our mandate. And it is not just about climate, it is also about biodiversity loss. Because also for, by, biodiversity loss is a source of financial risk. So therefore, the way financial firms manage the biodiversity loss related risk is also very much within our mandate. So no, we are not the WWF. We are central banks and supervisors. But just like you, we are profoundly concerned about climate change. Just like you, we are profoundly concerned about the loss of biodiversity. Not because we have suddenly strayed away from our legal mandate, but to the contrary, because we stay very much within it. So let me tell you a word or two on our work on biodiversity. Last year, uh, published at the beginning of last year, our report Values at Risk shows the Dutch financial sector is also exposed to risk from environmental and social challenges such as water scarcity, raw material scarcity, human rights controversies and biodiversity loss. This coming June we aim to publish a follow-up study on the risk of biodiversity loss for the Dutch financial sector. 
This study is a first co-production with the Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency, combining the financial and environmental knowledge. In this study, we will show how far Dutch financial institutions are exposed to sectors that are highly dependent on or that have a negative impact on biodiversity and certain ecosystem services. To give you a sneak peek, initial estimates show that around 330 billion euro of investments and loans, a quarter of the total portfolio investigated, are highly or very highly dependent on ecosystem services. So let me return to the question I asked earlier. How are we going to recover economically from the COVID crisis? Is that recovery going to be brown or green? Are we in misguided attempts to restore the old economy going to continue to destroy the planet by locking in a 3.7 plus degree future? Are we going to squander the very last chance we might have to avoid catastrophic climate change? The answer better be no. The answer must be no. I want to end my message with hope. I don't need to convince you of the seriousness of the situation. What I want to do is to make clear that we stand together. The WWF is a very esteemed stakeholder of the NGFS. And I hope it is clear that we central bankers, with our gray and dark blue suits, can and will be green. So let's find each other. Let's fight together against the corona crisis and against the climate crisis. In these dark days of the pandemic, we must create an avenue of hope. We must switch on the light. Let that light be green.